worksheet. Some of these you can just write directly on that worksheet. Others you will have to write like at the bottom or even on the back. There's a lot of room. The religion or the or sorry, the government systems. Government systems, not religion. Oh, this one. This one with the boxes. Oh, monarchy, democracy, communism, socialism. Fascism, Where do you want me to stick? dictatorship. Are you done? Did you write redo at the top? No, it's not Okay, so when it comes to government, you don't need to write down all of this. You should have kind of an inherent idea. Uh, governments, like the basic, basic structure. Um, it dictates like ways of life, interactions between individuals and, the and like the, this or the leaders. Uh, it dictates the interactions between different countries. Basically, like a, a rules over, like a set of rules over the people. Oh, wait, where is authorian? Authoritarian. Okay, so authoritarian, this is a type of government in which the people don't have a lot of like rights or privileges. They can be punished by the government really easily. If they go against a leader, if they don't like a leader and like speak out against them, they can get thrown in jail or they can be tortured or killed. Yes? So like in medieval today in some countries. North Korea. Yes. Do we know who these individuals are, right? Kim Jong-un and some gang members. Okay, so it's Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea. Real quick, how did Kim Jong-un rise to power in North Korea? His, his brother. So he wasn't powerful until he killed his brother? Um, his father was a dictator. Okay, his father was a dictator. How did his father get into power. Didn't that his family like take over? Okay, his father, Kim Jong-un's father's father was in power. How did he get into power? Didn't they take his over? Father. He was no, actually not his father because he was a communist general after <laughs> World War II. I knew it. They actually took over the leading North Korean okay. so, thingy. You have Kim Jong-un who, by the way, if people oppose the government in North Korea, they can along with their entire families, be thrown into like basically a labor camp where they work all day. They're given like a little bit of rice to eat. They're basically starving. It's horrible conditions. Them and their family can get thrown in there if uh, they oppose the government. They censor information. They can't just get on a computer and just Google information like we can. Basically, the only information they're exposed to is stuff that promotes Kim Jong-un, promotes the North Korean government. A lot of people in North Korea legitimately believe that their country is like this great, powerful country and that all the other countries look up to them and respect them. When in reality, that's a joke. Like, it's not true. Nobody looks at North Korea as like a leader on the world stage. But their people believe that because, in a sense, they're brainwashed, they're indoctrinated. Okay, so you have Kim Jong-un. He also killed his stepbrother who he viewed as a threat to power. He had his uncle killed. Uh, so he's an authoritarian leader. Do we know who this is in the picture with him? Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Are you serious? No, it is not Snoop Dogg. I'm like, wait, what? Not Snoopy Dogg. Okay, it's a guy named Dennis Rodman. I'll tell you. Oh, I love Dennis Rodman. Wait, he's a rapper, isn't he? No, he's a, he's a basketball player. Oh. This guy played on the Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan. Here's him and Michael Jordan together. You might be asking yourself, why is Dennis Rodman in a picture with Kim Jong-un? So I'll tell you the story, the backstory behind this. It was Photoshop. Kim Jong-un, he went to a private school in Switzerland where he used a fake name. No one knew that he was like the dictator of North Korea's son. And while he was there, he really liked basketball. And he always had like really nice, like one of his classmates remember, he always had really nice basketball shoes and he always loved Michael Jordan. He would always like play. Uh, basketball during gym time, and he loved the Chicago Bulls. And then anyway, it's like he gets older and he becomes the dictator of North Korea. And Dennis Rodman plays his NBA career. He uh, ends up winning some championships, but he also 
spends almost all of his money. He had like an entourage that would follow him around. He would go to clubs and he would buy everyone in there that was following him like drinks and he'd buy them other substances. He literally spent like all his money on basically these freeloaders and other stuff. And so he's broke, his NBA career's done, and so now him and Kim Jong-un get in contact, and Kim Jong-un invites Dennis Rodman to North Korea. And then while he's there, he gets flown to Kim Jong-un's private island off the coast of North Korea, and he later comes back to the U.S. and says, oh, Kim Jong-un's a great guy. He gave me a lot of drinks, wanted to make sure I was having a good time. He's always wanting to make sure that the people around him are having a good time. And reporters grilled Dennis Rodman and said, did you ask him about uh, his human rights abuses? And Dennis Rodman got kind of defensive and upset. But Dennis Rodman is now the ambassador for the U.S. to North Korea. No way. Heck no. But the, ambassador? the ambassador, they're supposed to be kind of like a diplomat, like a, like someone who like, takes notes. But the thing is, ambassadors are usually appointed by, like, top government leaders, but no U.S. leaders actually appointed Dennis Rodman to that position. It's just that, like, it's basically the only American that Kim Jong-un will, like, allow to come in, like, freely. And, like, the only, like, the main American that, that, that uh, Kim Jong-un really likes. So he's, like, a spy? No, he's not, no, he doesn't come and tell the government information. He just goes and he gets drunk with Kim Jong-un. <laughs> he's serious. Basically. Bro, freaking communism sucks. Speaking of which, communism. Or, or who knows what communism is in here? Yeah. Who can, who can give a quick? Yeah. Um, it's where everyone shares everything and everyone has what they need. Okay, everyone shares everything and everyone has what they need. That's maybe like the ideal goal of like what some individuals imagine communism being. So communism, a little history lesson. I'll go ahead and pull up a picture of this guy too. There was a. There was a philosopher, a German philosopher, in the 1800s named Karl Marx. Wait, now hold on. Communism, what is it? So Karl Marx, 1800s, he wrote a lot about what he called class struggle, where he said... Frederick Douglass. A little bit. It does look a little bit like He looks like Frederick Douglass. Except for uh, white Marx 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 So... Anyways, Karl, Karl Marx, he wrote about class struggle, and he said that throughout history, those that had a lot always took advantage of those that didn't, whether it was like basically royalty taking advantage of peasants, or whether it was in more modern times like factory owners taking advantage of people that like worked for them. He argued that there was always this class struggle where it was like the group that was more well off was taking advantage of the group that was less well off. And he argued that what would happen eventually is you'd have workers that would unite together and they would like overthrow the basically like wealthy factory owners that they would take the factories for themselves and they would govern themselves he wrote about that happening and then he died french uh, revolution uh he was after the french revolution i know french we'll, revolution we'll talk about the french revolution later in class but he basically predicted that that would happen and then he died and this was late 1800s, and then early 1900s, you have a guy come along named Vladimir Lenin. Does anyone know that name? Le I hear, yes, I think so. I, Does anyone I, know I, which one Vladimir Lenin is of these three? He's Russian. He's a very bad one. He, he, yeah, he's, very what? He's the guy with the bald head. This one? Because yep. that guy, to the right, is Stalin. Okay. Am I right? Yeah, so you have Vladimir Lenin. Vladimir Lenin is the first person to actually implement communism, or attempt to implement it. So around the time of the Russian Revolution, this is around like kind of around 1920-ish, that general time period, Vladimir Lenin attempts to implement basically like a communist government in Russia, where his group owned the factories and they were going to like distribute goods. And then he died, but you had Joseph Stalin, who was kind of like one of his aides, like they knew each other. Stalin took over. And then Stalin was really brutal. Stalin was more brutal than Lenin planned on being. He would imprison people that. Basically, like Russians, uh, there were some people that embraced communism and liked the idea, and there were others who fought against it and didn't like it. Mainly, like the landowners, the factory owners, they didn't like the idea of their land and their factories being like taken from them and given to the government. So some of the people that resisted, Stalin would put them in what's called gulags. Have you ever heard of that before? A gulag? Yeah, the big house. Yeah. 
Russian gulag. Is this like a dreamy type thing? Kind of? Like, I don't know. Like, it's like, it's technically dreamy, but not. Yeah, I know what you're, I know what you're saying, because I saw this on the Muppets Most Wanted. Yeah, I saw it too. Okay. The so, gulag. So in gulag, basically, it was, in Russia, you had these gulags that were in like cold places, just kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and they would make people work, and they were pretty brutal to some of the prisoners. For example, they'd make them uh, go out, and you'd have like a river that was iced over, and they'd say, dig to the water, like get to the water with your bare hands. So they're out there just like scraping their hands on ice. Like well, there was a lot of just like, just there's a lot of abuse, there's a lot of starvation and sickness in these gulags. And then oh. Stalin, so he eventually ends up dying after he killed millions and millions of people himself. Actually, more people died under Stalin than died under Hitler. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. But a lot of people died under Stalin. And then you have, does anyone know who this is? Um, it's it's No. But he looks Japanese. China. 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 Mao Zedong. Okay, so Mao Zedong was the leader in China that attempted to implement communism. Well, he failed. No, he didn't. Mm, they still have oh, elements oops. of a communist country. Yeah, today. but he failed. Okay. All right, real quick. So this is where you have the government controlling property and distribution of goods. One main thing, though, it doesn't show it up here. Communism often has elements of authoritarianism or totalitarianism, where people that dissent, the government cracks down on them. That's one main difference between communism and something like democratic socialism. Don't get the two confused. I still hear people all the time that say communism and socialism, like basically the same. There are some main differences. Wait, I anyone, just realized you have a Fitbit. Has anyone here ever read the book Animal Farm? Yes, George what? Orwell. Very good, it is by George Orwell. Oh, that's a very nice Along thing. with nine, the book 1984. What is Animal Farm about? It's pretty much Russia. Okay, it's, it's supposed to be like symbolic what? of Russia, right? Yep. Uh, click onto that picture yeah. right there. Cool. I would say so. You say what, right? I, I would say that it's symbolic of Russia. Oh, yeah, kind of. so the guy that wrote it, George Orwell, keep in mind, he was a democratic socialist. He hated Stalin, he hated authoritarianism, didn't like communism, and so, what basically happens in this book, you have animals living on a farm, and they uh, basically come to the conclusion that the humans exploit them, the humans take advantage of them. And so they eventually have a revolution where they overthrow the humans. And then once the humans are gone, the pigs are the smartest animals, and the pigs start basically organizing the other animals and telling them to keep working on the farm and what to do, and they emphasize that it's essential for the farm to keep running. And then eventually the pigs are living inside the human house and they're eating human food and they're walking on their hind legs and they're wearing human clothes. And by the end, the main message is like the pigs basically turned into the humans. And the main idea of that book is that it's like the people that implemented communism, like the communist leaders in Russia, they were just as bad as the original factory owners that they like overthrew. They were just as brutal, if not more brutal. So keep in mind, the guy that wrote that book, he was a democratic socialist, basically the same as like Bernie Sanders. Oh, Mr. Which democratic socialism, that's more like the people choose for the government to own some of the means of production. They choose for the government yeah, to own wait, some Wait, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, go back to it. Oh. Oh, click that pic, yeah, that one. Click that picture. Okay, oh, but I, I see what he's I see what he's saying. But it's ev evolution, but except something really disturbing. Okay, moving on. So it is constitutional. This is not on your page, so you should write this at the bottom or on the back page. Constitutional type of government. So this is a government whose power is limited by a document, or usually by a specific constitution. America. Yes, the United States has a constitution. So uh, Britain. What, according to our constitution, what are some limits placed on the government? Uh, yeah. So limits on the government, um, is you can't, first of all, you can't, uh, what? Oh. So basically, it says in there about like, when, 
Well, it talks about that one can't be poor, it can't be stronger than the other. And for example, like the president can't. Oh, you're talking about the the separate branches of like yeah. executive, judicial, like so. Yeah, okay, that's one thing. Cameron, what were you gonna say? Within the Constitution. <laughs> Okay, yeah, those are things that are in the Constitution, like freedom of religion, freedom of press, which means that it's like newspapers and journalists, they can produce information and they're not gonna be punished for it. It's all about limiting the government uh, in the Constitution. Yeah, freedom of speech. I wanna ask the question, if YouTube takes down someone's video, they, let's say maybe they don't like the political message or they don't like something about the video, are they violating the Constitution? Or are they violating freedom of speech? Yes. Are they? Yeah. No. Wait. Mind. No. Repeat. Yeah. Repeat. Is you if YouTube takes down a video, are they violating someone's freedom of speech? Well, it depends. No. It depends. Okay, Mason. Why do you say no? Because when you uh, sign up for YouTube, you uh, you click on their like rights or the agreement to their terms of service. Oh yeah. That oh, says what. Well, Okay. That is true. So, gosh, it's not like freaking. Even aside from that, like sure, that's one good point. But even aside from that, the Constitution is saying you can do these things and the government can't punish you. That doesn't mean that a business has to let you do it. So, for example, if you walk in to a private restaurant and you, I don't think most of you would do this, maybe one or two, but if you walk really? into a restaurant and you start saying a bunch of racial slurs and things that the owners think uh -huh. is like really offensive. The owners can tell you to leave, and they're not violating your freedom of speech. Freedom of speech in the Constitution, that just means the government can't throw you in jail for it. Oh, like as long as you're not hurting you. anyone else, you can say what you want. Yeah. But also some, uh, some people uh, don't like know the full uh, uh, amendment of freedom of speech. It's, it's freedom of speech unless in a public area. So like... If you were to go into a restaurant and just start yelling out all these racial slurs, they they can't throw you in jail for it, but it still is a really bad thing to do. It's not you, like it's not part of the amendment. They can ask you to leave the restaurant. Yes. But there, I mean, you can go out on the streets. I mean, some states. So this is kind of another topic. They're trying to get into like passing what they call like hate speech bills where. If you say certain things that they say are like too hateful, then they can go after you. But in general, like for most of American history, you can go out in the street and say racist things. You can say all kinds of like mean things, bad things, and you're not going to go to jail for it. I mean, it might make you look bad. People might be less likely to hire you or be your friend, but you're not going to. The government's not going to throw you in jail for it. That's what the Constitution is about. It's limiting the government, making Wait. sure that you can't just get punished by the government for certain things. Yes. What are racial slurs? Um. Like, I'm not going to say any, but things no, that... No, obviously don't say those. Things no, that historically, like, have been said to maybe... An example, like, people of color, things that have been said to them that, in a, like, negative connotation. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's like the sure. N-word. what Tate said. All right, next thing. This isn't on your paper either, but it's one you should know. Plutocracy. This is supposed to be ruled by the rich. I want you to analyze this cartoon right here. Make I sure know. you read all of it. By the way, Young, I believe that's the artist, so don't worry about that. But read all of this and try and decipher its meaning. Yeah. Big companies own the, the like the some com big companies are paying people in the government, but it's like they're paying politicians to support them uh. and protect them. Okay saying that they are supporting politicians. Yeah, but it says listen to the candidates. Candidates meaning people that are campaigning, that are trying to be elected in office. That's who the people see and sometimes think of when it comes to government. But they don't think of the basically the huge corporations, the big oil companies or tobacco companies or pharmaceutical companies that are behind the scenes basically encouraging the politicians to say and do specific things. Yeah, Cameron. Okay, he also has a puppet. Yeah. Like puppets, yeah. yeah, like the politicians are puppets. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Good. 
So some individuals will argue that the United States has elements of a plutocracy. True. Others may disagree, but a lot of scholars, a lot of economists, political scientists, a lot of people would argue that in the United States, we have elements of plutocracy. Another word for this that you might hear of, you'll hear Bernie Sanders uses this word. He calls it an oligarchy. This is like rule by the powerful, rule by the few. Pretty similar to plutocracy. Yeah? So it's good to like, it's like, can I say something come up? Can I come up and like say something? Uh, stay where you are okay. and say it quickly. So if you look, if you look to the puppet, if you look to the puppet's face, well, how you can tell it's a puppet, first of all, about look at the face and look how it's shaped. And if you look, there is a little hinge there that's covering up where the bolt is. But basically, what they're doing is they're using, not, not using, doing it, like other things, they're using, like you said, the Koch brothers, like, of course, but they're using people to, to try to basically tell everybody this is this is right. This is like you said that the Koch brothers used like scientists that said that it was it was right. Like they paid them. Now that's basically it's basically bribery, and it's like that's not right. Yeah, and they, they will get other people because it's not as credible if you have an oil company saying like, hey, look at this study, as opposed to like a politician or someone that's not that's not like exactly the CEO of a company. That yeah. makes sense. Okay, moving on to the next topic. Make sure you have this down. Democracy. So democracy. This is a government by the people. Is representative democracy? Representative democracy is a form of it, and it's up. It's what we have. So. We don't go out and directly vote on the laws. So instead, what we do is we vote on uh, who we want to represent us. Yes, we vote, that's representing the market. We vote on who we want to represent us. Like the, you know, did you all see last year around here during the campaign, se the campaign season, like Todd Weiler for state senate signs or um, uh, Melissa Garth Ballard for state house of representative signs. Like those are examples of people who now like represent this general area. So we vote for people to represent us, and then they vote for the laws. Yeah, Gabe. The United States is a representative democracy. United States is a representative democracy. Yeah. So again, a country can be multiple things. Some analysts would say, well, the United States is a, re is a representative democracy. It is a plutocracy. It's a constitutional government. You can have a country that fits into multiple categories. USSR was country. So they wouldn't be communist? No, I said USSR, USSR would be communist. Yeah, yeah, like the Soviet Union back in the day, and even Russia now, like with Vladimir Putin, they still have elements of being a communist dictatorship. Okay, dictatorship. Dicta oh. Who is this right here? That is yeah, Hitler. Hitler. Okay, you would be surprised how many individuals in other classes asked if this was Martin Luther King. What? Are there you were, serious? There were a lot of people. I was like, I know that they both have mustaches, but besides that, they I don't. They don't really have a lot. I'm of saying, you know, that is the. I don't think that's Martin Luther King. Are you kidding me? It's a black and white photo. I know, I know, it is a black and white photo. It's a black and white photo. His skin color is white. Get it right, people. Yeah, I'm, some people mess it up, but again. What did Hitler do? He killed millions of people. So like under two, uh, six, under six, he six, killed millions of six, people under his command. Yeah, he killed millions of people. What he would do his strategy basically is he was trying to take over Europe and he would go after the Jews in the area that he took over. So for example, he went into France. Nazis went into France and then Jews were trying to escape and a lot of them did, but he would try to then round up any Jews that were in France. He'd go into Belgium or into Can you hear Kendall? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he'd Amsterdam. Go in, yeah, he'd go into different countries and then he would basically just round up the Jews there. The main difference between a dictatorship and authoritarianism, even though they can be the same, for it to be a dictatorship, it's one main person in power where you can have some authoritarian countries where you have like a lot of people in power. You have like multiple people in power, or even like a top, like top leaders in a political party or top leaders in an organization. A dictatorship, it's like there's one main person who overall can 
make the final decision on anything. So then, what do you think? Yes, we do that. Um, yeah, we're, can we just put down Nazi Germany? Uh, for an example? Yeah, of a dictatorship? Oh, yeah. An example. Yeah, for fascism slash dictatorship, you can put down Nazi Germany. Alright. Well, no, it should be. put well, down Italy with Mussolini, but. Well, hold on. Is it N A T Z I? No, N A Z I. N A Z I is Nazi. I know it sounds like it would have a T, but it's N A Z I. Nazi. Yeah, it's just okay. All we right. better also we'll, we'll keep going next time. I, I don't want to get too far ahead of the other classes. Wait, I got that. Hold on. Wait, Government we're run. No, we're all we're like the same. Run by. But I like a, them. Mm,